Now that we've all had a couple of days to digest what happened at Wimbledon 2023, it's time to go through a couple of things that I've learned over the last couple of weeks in terms of how things have changed from Wimbledon. Of course, we had some massive results with two new champions, how that changes the game and what to look forward to in the future with some of these new things that we're seeing in tennis at the moment. First thing that I learned was that the game has changed. Elkaraz has changed things massively in the game. He's raised his level and he's raised the bar for his generation. Not so much the GOAT generation. He might not be better than Nadal and Djokovic. Only time will tell. But in terms of everybody else, you know, he's changed the game, the variety. He can play at the baseline. He can come to the net. The drop shots, the serve as well, seems to be getting better and better. It can't be a one-trick pony anymore. Guys like Medvedev, who can't play at the net. He only grinds the baseline. Uh, Zverev, who's a little defensive at times as well. And Sitipas and Berrettini, who have massive holes in their backhands. You can't be like that anymore if you're going to beat this guy at the slams. Second thing I learned was Jabir will get her slam. I know a lot of people are saying that, you know, she's 0-3 and, and, oh, she'll never get one. She'll never get one. There's a lot of players that have had worse records or even the same record and gone on to win multiple slams. Chris Ebert was 0-3 before she went on a 118 Grand Slam titles. Kim Kleisters was 0-4 before she won hers. And also Simona Halep was 0-3 before she got her couple as well. So once Jabir will get hers, she's just going to get in some more finals and she'll get one eventually. And she actually beat four Grand Slam champions just to make the final with Andrescu, Kvitova, Rabakina, and Sabalenka back to back to back. And then she had to play Von Drusser in the final. So usually when you beat two of those players, you win a slam. She had to play four of them and she still didn't get her slam. So if she keeps that level, she'll get hers eventually. And the last thing I learned about Wimbledon 2023 is Djokovic is still the king. Even though Alcaraz might have dethroned him this time around, he is still the man to beat. Alcaraz said it himself. Djokovic is still the best player on the planet, even though he is technically the world number one. But Djokovic could have been up two sets of love in that final. He had set points in the second set. If he goes up two sets of love, we probably don't get the epic final. And we probably don't get the upset with Alcaraz getting the win. So Djokovic is still the man to beat. And I think it's going to keep him hungry with this Alcaraz threat now to try and prove himself that, hey, I might be 36, but I'm still the best player on the planet. And I'm still the hardest player to beat at the slams. So those are the three things that I learned about Wimbledon 2023. And of course, we've got the US Open Series coming up in the next couple of weeks. But let me know down in the comments below. What did you learn after Wimbledon 2023? So many things happened over that short period of time. Players, you know, like maybe Svetlina making a semi-final. Von Drusseva, is she going to be a threat at every slam now? Or is it just going to be the one slam that she did well at? On the men's side, you know, guys like Medvedev and Sitsipas, can they step up? to Alcaraz and try and make him accountable and uh, give him some challenges other than just having the challenge of Djokovic. But that's what I learned at 2023 Wimbledon. What did you learn? Let me know down in the comments below.